Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another edition, another session of Chats with Dr. Messi Umeri. Today, I am here with somebody that I love so, so much. I am here with my brother. When I say my mm. brother, it is not the general way we describe brothers in Nigeria. This is my biological brother. This is my brother from the same womb, the same father, the same mother, right? I'm <laughs> here with my brother. His name is Emmanuel, Pastor Emmanuel Okore, but he's popularly known as Gimakonga, P-O-K, Pastor <laughs> Ogimakonga. My brother, you are welcome, welcome to this series of Chats with Dr. Messi Umeri. Oh my goodness, it's, it's such a huge pleasure and a blessing to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm great. When we were planning this, we advised ourselves that we will be serious. We will, we will try. We will try. We will try and be serious and we will try and make sure that people oh are rest. Without, you know, without much ado, I'm going to quickly read a short version of Emmanuel's um, bio. Then we will go right in. Today, we will be talking about practical ways to build resilience. And I tell you the truth. There is nobody I know that can teach or talk about this topic other than this, my brother. Emmanuel's life is a testimony. Emmanuel's life is a blessing. Even though he calls me big sis, I get to learn a lot from him. I get to learn a lot from him. It's not all the time that you have siblings who are friends, who are gist partners, who are prayer partners, who are vision partners. Emmanuel is all of this to me. It is such a huge privilege to have him talk today on this, on this series. Like, let's, let's quickly go because I can talk about Emmanuel forever. Emmanuel Okorie is a graduate of computer science and a trained aircraft mechanic and technician. He has vast and he's very vast and experienced in the aviation sector particularly the engineering department. He has over 15 years work experience with top-notch airlines, including, but not limited to Virgin Nigeria, Air Nigeria, uh, sorry, Air Nigeria, yes, Air Peace, where he garnered most of his experience. Currently, Emmanuel is the CEO of Boarding Gate Travels, is a travel agency, and Emmanuel started this business in 2017. It's a business that is growing and going places. And we'll talk about that in, in, in more later. Emmanuel is the music director and head of department of the music department in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the Oasis, with over 50 worshippers of God under the leadership of Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. Emmanuel is also a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church. He is a conga player with the Hallelujah Challenge, and he is an intense lover of the Lord and a passionate worshiper of Jesus. He is married to his beautiful wife, Barista Jesulayomi Okori, who is my dear, dear sister. And they are blessed with two amazing children, Kiana and Kimwell. Incidentally, Kimwell is my godson. I am very, very excited to have you. Emmanuel, mm -hmm. welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh -uh. See, see so bio much. now. See bio now. Uh -uh. <laughs> oh my you God. are too Thank much. You. you are too much. Thank so you so much for having me. It's <laughs> such a huge... Uh, I count it uh, growing up, this will be like uh, a reality come true. I remember one time we, we were talking about dreams and vision. And I... You know, I mentioned to you that in the, next, in the next couple of years, I see us doing great things. And uh, it's, it's, it's quite fascinating to see us living the very things that we spoke about. Absolutely. Um, and we have to do with um, our faith and the things we speak, trusting God through the process. I'm, I'm here speaking with um, my sister who is a professor, uh, not in Nigeria, but in the U.S., who 
is um, somebody that has influenced my life growing, just being here, just having a conversation, just brings back all of those things that we've talked about and we are living that reality now. It's not something we are hoping to live in the nearest future. We are living that reality now and that just to let us know that whatever we say with the mouth and we believe, it's just a matter of time. It's going to come to pass. You, so see, you see why he's a pastor. We've not even asked any question. He has started preaching. My goodness. So, Imano, thank you so much for your kind words. But I think um, one of the things that you said that is very profound is the power of our words. Everything yeah. we said, everything we prayed about, we have we have seen them come to pass and we are living in yeah. them. Just sitting down yeah. and having this conversation with you is a dream come true. We are not yes. living in this dream in our 50s or in our 60s, which would have been wonderful, right? We are living yes. in this dream as young people, which, which is amazing. The power of our words, the things that yes. we said in secret, when there was no yeah. Instagram, when there was no Facebook, in the corner mm. of our rooms then where we held yeah. hands and yeah. spoke things yeah. into existence. And today we're actually yeah. living in all of them, which is yes. what we're going to talk about today. Practical yes. ways to build resilience. I'm not even, this is, as, a, as to let everybody know, there was no pre, pre-arranged question or pre-rehearsed questions. Most of what yeah. I'm asking Emmanuel today are questions, you know, just like they are on the spot questions because I want this conversation to be rich and I want it to be as practical as possible, just as the title is, Practical Ways to mm-hmm. Resilience. You already started, which is interesting, to, to just tell you how that the spirit is one because the first question I wanted to ask you is, we were raised by our parents to be two things hardworking and very prayerful because yeah. growing up materially you know what people call wealth riches we didn't have them but yeah. we had two things we had parents who told us the importance of hard work whether it's in our academics or whether in life generally and we had parents yeah. who let us know that with God, all things are possible. That means if you pray about something, (laughs) you speak forth words that those things will come to pass. I want you to, I want you to tell my listening audience how that impacted you as a person growing up. Thank you uh, so much. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing that now I'm also a parent. I can also relate with how you can form the world of your children with your prayers and the things you say with your mouth over your children. Wow. Most of what most of what is happening to me now, to to you, to every member of the family is our um, siblings, yes. As a result of how we how we saw life mm-hmm. and how we were intentional about speaking. I remember growing up, the, the two people I had in front of me who were more like my mentor were yourself and our big brother. Our big brother. Know, engineer. engineer. And uh, it, 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 was so, it was so good that the two of you were the, the people in front of us that we could look up to hmm. in terms of education and in terms of how the both of you saw life hmm. and approached life. Mm. Growing up wasn't the very pleasant one, but there was just this belief and faith that tomorrow was going to be better. Yes, I remember when you got admission into UNN, and uh, we had to, you know, we had to, we had to scrap, scrap everything just to. We, we we saw all of that. It wasn't something that was told us. We, oh, we saw it. Then UNN. For my listeners is university of nigeria it was where okay. i got my first degree from so manuel is talking about that experience of going back to school 
And I have told some of that story in my TEDx talk. So it is nice to have my brother talk about it now. <laughs> just, just watch the two of you defiling all odds. Mm. The, the, the normal perception of uh, growing up is your parents provide for you and they provide all that you need. But we, we saw the two of you, despite the odds, despite the lack, despite the challenges, one of the things that actually made me you know, become who I am today is because I watched the two of you, even the things that you did. Just watching the two of you going ahead of us, just you gave me that mind, gave me that mindset that I could do it also, wow. that I can yeah. also do. You know, that, that, built, that built over time so much confidence Mm. I, I, used, I used to tell people that one of the people who, who helped me out in um, overcoming inferiority complex was my elder sister, oh, which is oh. Dr. Mary. Oh. I remember growing up, most of the time she would come back from school. Um, every of the events that would bring exposure, she would make me tag along with her. Then it looked like nothing. It looked like we we're just going out. But you, now I can see how that has affected my life now i can i can i can stay anywhere i can stand anywhere and be myself yes um, i'm not afraid of whoever is in the room i'm not intimidated by whatever you have yes. that has just built and everywhere i found myself i've always told myself that if these two people that's my sister and my brother can actually achieve these things then it is not impossible yeah. to add this. So beyond what our parents taught us, yes, they, they did their best at their own level, yes. but we had people who we looked up to, mm. who informed the decisions that we took, and uh, we we watched you guys closely. Mm. The way you, the way you 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 behave, the way you approach life, the things you did, the things you did not do. You know, how you were able with even little resources, you were able to be the best, you know, in your field, in your career, and you also just that in, in into God that also just made us believe that if you're hardworking, if you're determined, and with God on your side. The sky in the sky is the starting point. And now I can see that coming to reality. You were saying, I remember. And then you, you used to say that if you can, if you can see it, you can believe it, you will have it. There's this your quote. I, 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 even all my, all my friends and all my church members, they, 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 they refer back to that quote. I used to say that if it's too expensive, you get it for free. And that's just to say that whatever you want in life, the things that you think are obstacles shouldn't be obstacles because a lot of us have given reasons why we should not do stuff because of the resources that we don't have. But you've always had this man mindset that even when you don't have it, just trusting God and believing, sometimes they come for free. Yes. Sometimes they come in a most gloss way, the way you never expected to come. Yes. And now I know that it is faith at work. Yes. You get being yes. able to put your mind to what you want to achieve, not relenting mm. and not giving up. That will impact in the things that you do. Hey, this is my brother. You're just spitting. You're just spitting things. Oh my goodness. And I want to, I know that our big brother would also be watching this. We want to give a shout out to him, Engineer Uchenna Okorie. Thank you so much for being just a huge blessing to us. And it's just so beautiful to be able to give people their flowers while they are alive. Uchenna, yeah. thank you. Thank you, big brother. And you see, you already, yeah. you already moved into the next thing I wanted to talk about. And that's the importance of mentors in our lives the importance of mentors in our lives like you said our parents did their bit but it was easier for you and our younger siblings because this you saw I and Uchenna do these things right today 
today, I know that you have carried that mentorship to another level. I know that you are a yeah. mentee of Pastor Nathaniel Bassey, right? And I know other people who yeah. have made so much impact in your life. When we look at the young yes. people who are coming up, whether it's at work, in the workplace, or in ministry, what are some of the mentorship lessons that you have learned that has helped you so far? Number one, for you to have a mentor, number one, you must, you must believe in that mentor. Mm. You must honor the mentors that you have. And when I mean Honor is not in terms of material things. A lot of people think when you honor people is when you give them gifts and when you give them money. Mm. Honoring is listening to them and living the kind of life that they live. Mm. Um, following the footsteps mm. you get. Uh, the reason why most of us did not misbehave is because we, we saw you and a brother live a certain life. Mm. And that in growing up now we are we are more knowledgeable mm -hmm. we are living our own life now we have the mentors in front of us the, the problem is not just have, you have mentors all around you yes the technology technologies that make it easy when you go on youtube you see a lot of speakers a lot of coaches some are even paid coaches yes. some subscribe to to be a mentee mm -hmm. but god has given us People we can look up to yeah. who have gone through that process. And I tell people that because I suffer does not mean someone else should suffer. Absolutely. They should look at they should look at me or the lessons I've gone through and pick out on those things that will help. But the problem now is a lot of the young people we have now, they want to have it easy. Yes, you get quick, they want quick. the short word. Yes, quick, get yes. it. Quick. They don't yeah. want to they don't want to pay the price. Yes. Yeah, they don't want to pay the price. They want the fast food success. Yes. They want to in and out. Fast. They want yes, they want to blow. You get. <laughs> but these things take time. I remember when my airline shut down. I've said this story over and over again. But the truth of the matter is that. I had someone uh, I, I looked up to. Within my, within my space, I had someone I could look up to physically. At the time, you were pursuing your own career. Uche was pursuing his own career. And, but, but that proximity wasn't there. So I needed someone who I could look up to, who I could see every time, listen to every time. I know, you know from time to time, we still reach out to each other. We talk and uh, we catch up and we still learn. But at a time when I needed to go through my journey myself, I, I, I had someone, which, is, which was my pastor, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. And uh, just and listening this, to him. And, and this is the story. point where I want to say, Pastor Nath, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We honor you, not just for what you have done in Emmanuel's life, but also the blessing that you are to us as a family. Uh, we have, we are learning from you. You are our mentor. <laughs> <laughs> we are reading, following your work, and you are a blessing to every one of us in the Okore and Omeri families. I needed to say that, Pastor Nat, we love you yeah. so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. So, no problem. I needed someone with, with the help of God, you know, divine orchestration. I was led to our sister Oasis, where I would be under the leadership of Pastor Nat. Yes. Uh, just looking at his life, and how God has helped him through prayers and through just sitting on the discipline and correction. And for everyone who, who, who has been or who is on the personal, you know that it's not the kind of leader who would um, pamper you. He's tough on us. He's very, he's very strict with us. He, he hates mediocrity. I love that. He hates when people are are not disciplined mm. when you are lazy. Mm. That you 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 know that if Pastor Nat gives you a task to do and you he comes to ask you how far, you don't come with excuses. I like that. You come with results. Right. For 
everyone who has gone under the tutelage of Pastor Nat will know that beyond just being a pastor, he's a father, also a, a, a coach, yes. a life coach. Yes. Pastor Nat is not that kind of person that wants to tell you what you want to hear, which also brings me to, to our generation now. A lot of us have said that we have people who have each years, they will be they are looking for people who will tell them what, what will suit their ears. You get they are looking for teachers who will caress their ego and you tell them things that will make them happy. Mm. But the truth of the matter is if you want your life to transform mm. and you actually say you have a mentor, are you ready to go through those teachings? Are you ready to go through those disciplines? Mm. The Bible says that the, 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 the branch which does not bear fruit, our Heavenly Father will cut away. Yes. A lot of us are always afraid to go through pruning. We want, we want to live the good life, but we don't want to go through the corrections. We want to have the best things in life, mm. but we don't want to go through the, the, the school of discipline, yes. the school yeah. of delay. Yeah gratification we we want it now now and that's the reason why people some people probably are going through their down seasons now maybe they just lost their job for six months and they're all already having mental breakdown there are people who have gone through seasons without having a job for five years for 10 years it might sometimes it might not even be a job people have waited for the food in the room for five ten years it is what has been built in you over time Mm -hmm. that will speak and it is it is something a lot of the new the newer generation are uh are missing out from Mm. they don't want to sit down and be and be taught Mm. they want they want they want those that will tell them this and this two plus two is quarter to (laughs) hundred meanwhile there is a process to this thing there is a process to this thing and the truth of the matter is that in the life journey, once you skip one step of the process, you will have to repeat it again. Wow. As you were talking, I was just mm. taking notes about mentorship. I like the fact that you talked when you said Pastor Nat does not like mediocrity. He does not encourage laziness. He does not tell you what you want to hear. It is so important when we talk about it. Sometimes people go like, oh, I want someone like Pastor Nat. I want Pastor Nat to be my mentor. I want Pastor Nat to be my mentor. Are you ready for the work that is involved with being a mentee of somebody like that? Somebody who does not accept excuses. Somebody who doesn't accept laziness. Somebody who doesn't accept mediocrity. And these things are important today as we talk about mentorship. We talk about practical ways to build resilience. This is one of it. Are you willing yes. to be taught? Are you willing to take correction? Are you willing to follow through on a plan without just giving up mm-hmm. at the first challenge, right? These mm-hmm. are all practical tips to build resilience. It's not, a, it's not rocket science. You have to go through the steps. Like you said, this is not a microwave opportunities to build success no yes. whatever we're talking about now took time we built people see us today oh yes. Emmanuel you're successful oh Messi you're successful our brother Uchena is really doing well our other siblings are doing well but it's taking work it took yes. opportunities to listen and be taught by people and to follow through yes. to be yes. where we are today very important points. Yes, you were talking. I was also writing and making notes for myself because <laughs> these are no, these are important tips that I even still need to continue to grow in, yeah. even though I am yeah. where I am today. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> That's what happens when you bring Emmanuel on the stage because every question you ask, be ready to get a master class in each question. I want to go to something most people don't may not even know about you. Let me share. Before the world got to know you as Ogi Makonga, you've been doing this work. 
before Facebook, Instagram, or whatever social media platform, Emmanuel, you've been doing this work. Self, you self taught yourself how to play instruments. How many instruments do you play now? I know you play the keys. Um, I know you play, I play the guitar, the drums, the drums. I, and now I play the, yes. You know the conga. The conga. Interestingly, I started playing the conga in children's Sunday school. That's in the children's department. That's what I'm saying. Before yes. now, people see this and be like, oh, "He's very good in." Co you started when you were very little. No music yes. school, no yes. private lesson. Just going to church every day and playing on those instruments. Yes. You self yes. yourself. Today, you are leading one of the biggest choir in. I would I would say not just in Nigeria. I would come. I I dare to say. The Oasis Choir is one of the best in the world. And if, <laughs> let me yeah. let me be speaking, let me be speaking the things that we want to see, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. One, of, yeah. it's one of the best choir yeah. in the world. But you started this thing from when you were little. And you started yes. a children's choir from scratch. Yeah. In fact, yes. for children's choir, they even sang on my wedding day, which was like 17 yeah. years ago. <laughs> Your children's choir sang on my wedding day 17 years ago. Yes. You built these things from nothing. We've already told people, our parents didn't have the resources. We didn't have, there was nothing to say, oh, this is, you are going to music, music school. You are going there. Mm. But you used, you, you self-taught yourself. Then you built a choir from scratch. Those children, most of them are married to, to, to today. Yes. Most yes. of them. People in your children's choir, they are parents now. Yes. I want you to just share what was your motivation for all of this? This is what was your motivation as a young person doing all of this, not for show. Today, we some people probably do things to show on Instagram, but yeah. you were doing this without any showmanship, without any yeah. let them see me or recognize me. You were doing this from 20 something years ago in fact 30 something years ago what uh, your again i'll say that uh, from you know, it's it, it quite uh, interesting that everything that i learned growing up i watched i would keep saying this rather i learned from you I learned from uche i remember as a brother i remember then growing up when you guys were going for Choir rehearsals. Yes. You know, I would, I would Uchina, tag along. Uchina used then to play the drums. Up, Uchina used to play drums. The drums, I used, yes. I used to sing in the choir. The knowledge of the keyboard, yeah. You used to used to sing. You were the um, lead, lead vocalist <laughs> of the choir then. <laughs> lead vocalist. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, we, should, we should come together and sing again. We should come together and sing. You be on the instrument <laughs> and I'll sing. We should do that soon. <laughs> Then we used to have this um, family, and because the, the family we we, we 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 used to sing, yes, sing together. Sometimes yes. we go to church. We give family special number. Yes, you know, I think I just I just just developed that love for for music, and just growing up in a in a in a in a Christian home, I just fell in love in just being in the presence of God. I know backstory now i know that the hand of the lord is upon my life yeah. but just growing up there were just tokens and signs to know that there was just something different about me mm -hmm. there were several confirmations even how my name emmanuel came to be right from time i just i just developed that love in just being in the presence of god so that that love just you pushed me to learn the drums. Mm -hmm. I, I self-taught myself on the keyboard. Um, I remember, and this is something you're very conversant with. Um, you might not know. I remember when our then music director died, Bram Martins, on honor of blessed memory. Yeah. Uh, he was the only um, we had in church at that time. Yeah. And uh, when he died, there was just the need to fill up that space. That's you get the, the church did have another person to play the keyboard. So I needed to learn the keyboard so far so I'm able to play on the Sunday service. So whatever I learned during the week is what I come to church to play. And that was how 
I was able to to just build myself then just listening to music now then growing up you guys also make sure you feel the house with good gospel music yes you know um, then growing up you guys will go you buy cassettes now we are using mp3 and you know uh, wi-fi and all that oh my and it was God. You know, integrity music, oh. Adams, the CC Winers, and the yes. Baby Winers. Baby you know, those were songs that, yes, those were songs that we grew up to to listen to, and that formed our our, our minds. That formed our love for for God, and because we played that so much, most of those songs, because they carried a lot of power, also formed. Our atmosphere yes. you get you you just you just you just discover that the the, the worldly song were not making sense to you <laughs> if you had not listened to a good christian song you mm. you wouldn't be normal that just informed what we learned growing up and that was the driving force for me to learn the instrument and uh, before i knew it i just developed interest in just seeing people sing well you know the children's choir and with god's help with what we're doing right now, and what's just happened. Over the years, that has just been what has helped us develop. And I also see that happening to your, your children. Jaden Zim plays an Jaden, instrument Jaden, now. Jaden Zim plays, mm -hmm. the, Jaden Zim plays the keyboard well, the piano, and he plays the sax very well okay. now. Just because... Yeah. He keeps saying, I want to be like Uncle Emmanuel. He wants to learn how to play <laughs> instrument like Uncle Emmanuel. So you can see how generational, from one generation to the other, we are impacting lives. Jaden Zane now plays the instrument. My daughters, Karis and Kaniel, they sing really well now. They sing oh, well because, wow. again, it's something that we carried into the home. Yeah. Where we are playing music and we are ensuring that our atmosphere like you said we create mm. the atmosphere that we want and i just want to say thank you because now that it is in place that instrument well i know that most of the influence also came from you in seeing wow. you play all those wow. instruments so thank you wow. thank you so much for sh um, sharing that and I, I also want to say something here you, i remember then you talked about the fact that most of what you were doing now then when the world didn't know you we we are all seeing it play out now so yeah. he's so good he's leading this choir he's playing all this instrument but you started from when you were young and i'm so grateful that it was encouraged it was yes. sorry like yes. you said i and uchenna i remember how we used to defend you there was a day mommy came back and her I don't know even know what they call it. Is this spatula? The thing she uses to turn gari. So gari is cassava, <laughs> cassava powder in Nigeria. Cassava flour. We use it to turn and make. It, it looks like mashed potato. I'm just trying to make my audience understand part of. Anyway, the spatula. Imana was using it to beat drums and <laughs> broke the. Spatula, I mean, I hope it's spatula they call it. I don't want people to laugh at me. Whatever it is, they, we call it turning. Turning stick. Turning stick. Turning stick. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's just say turning stick. Thank you. Imone yeah. broke the turning stick and broke the plastic on which he was using as the drum. And when, and he, as if that was not enough, he now said he wanted to repair the only radio we had in the house. Imane said he wanted to repair the radio and dismantled oh, yeah. the radio and the radio stopped working. You can imagine. <laughs> My goodness. I and Uchenna, we paid dearly for that. They didn't touch him. My, My big brother paid dearly for that. But looking back now, you can see the engineering part with that radio thing that you were trying to do. Yeah. The musical part with the breaking of things in the house just because you wanted to make yeah. sound and make instrument and so i would just want to encourage yeah. listeners here maybe you have young children nothing is a waste if you see yes. if you see a talent that is burdening, you encourage it today 
some of us are well to do. We can send our kids to music school. We can pay yes. private teachers for them. But then Imani was just using the things in his environment. And today uh -huh. we can all celebrate this Ogi Makonga just because those seeds that have been planted were allowed yeah. to grow. Imani, wow. I'm trying not to make this thing stretch forever. I'm going to, I, <laughs> see, there's just so much to talk about, right? Yeah. So in a few days, you will be turning 40. Drum roll. Oh my goodness. Oh yes. Oh my oh, yes. goodness. How are you even 40? How? How are you 40? How are you 40 and looking like this? How are you 40? Look, somebody said, no, no, no. We need to ask your mom if actually your birth certificate reads May 29, 1984. You are going to be 40. You are um, one of the most hardworking person I know. Not because you are my brother. I remember when I was running Hemon Consult. Hemon Consult was my management consulting firm that I ran in Nigeria for some years. And my brother yeah. got to work with me. Mm. So Emmanuel has my kind of work ethics. While we were working together, nobody knew that you were my brother. Everybody knew you as Mr. Emmanuel. And they all mm. like to work with you because you would you have an excellent spirit. If you set your heart to a task, you do it and you do it well. And mm. I was surprised with where you are because at that time, I always told people, if you want the work to be done, give it to Emmanuel. If you want the mm. work to be done without excuses, give it to Emmanuel. Now you're turning 40. I just want you to talk to, I just want you to give some practical tips to young people. We've talked about your life growing up. We've talked about some of it as you transition into where you are today. Yeah. What tips will you give to, let's say your 20 old self, your yeah. 20 year old self. What yeah. tips do you Thank give? you. Thank you. Definitely we have another edition of this conversation. No, say that again. Say that again. I said we should have a part two of this because we can't also capture everything that we need to see now. But there's just so much here to learn and to and to and to share. One of one of the things I will I will say is the world is not a bed of roses. Yes. And never give excuse. Never or never excuses. Never give excuses for your present circumstance, present situation, present location, mm. present whatever that you're going through in life. Don't, don't ever, don't ever. Mm. I I remember, I remember when I I lost my, my job and it looked like everything was going to fall apart yes something just kept me going and it was beyond just praying and trusting god yes i i i, I remember telling my wife that i might not have everything i love god say, say that, definitely say that again it was breaking say that again because i don't want us to lose that thought you said when you lost when, your job when i lost when, when i lost my job one of the things um, kept going was I told myself that nothing discouraged me mm. from achieving the things I have set my heart to do. Mm. It may it may look like nothing is happening now, but with hard work, with discipline mm. and with resilience, trusting and believing in God. It may take time, but trust me, if you don't go through shortcuts and you believe that this thing is achievable it's just a matter of time it's going to it's going to happen encouraging my 20 year old self now i would i would i would, I would tell my 20 year old self don't rush hey don't rush don't rush yeah. be be consistent consistency mm. is something in, even in business i remember one time I, I in, in, in the process of just trying to make it in life, I'd lost my job. There was no job coming. And the, the Lord had put 
this business of travel in my house. There were other businesses that were like in quotes moving at a time in Nigeria, which you know, real estate was one of them. And I, I know I had people who were encouraging me to go into real estate, be an agent, get small money here and there. But I, I, I loved, I loved the, the the travel business. Yes. So at that time, nothing was happening. One of the things that helped me was consistency. Hmm. Consistency will help you build your brand. Say that again. Say that again. You said cons- cons- will help cons- you build your brand over yes. time. Thank you. Over time. Now, this is what consistency does. For example, I take it this way. You have to be consistent to the to the extent that when people hear your name, they should be able to attach your name with something hmm. that you do. Hmm. I'll give you a very good example. Wow. When you when Richard Branson, what comes to mind? Say that again. Richard Branson. If you oh. hear if you okay. hear Richard Branson, Richard Branson. Richard yes. Branson is the, the CEO. Yes. and owner of Virgin Atlantic comes to mind. If you hear Tony Melumelu, it uh, comes to your mind. You'll be a uh, transcore. <laughs> God bless you. Now, that is consistency. Now, he's able to diversify into different areas of business. But when he was starting off, he was so consistent in the banking industry. He was able to build a reputation and a brand for himself. Right now, if you mention Tony Elumelu anywhere, you should be able to identify him with something. Yes. Now, a lot of us, when they mention your name, what comes to mind? They are confused. People are confused. So they don't know if they should attach you to real estate or to or to canteen business or to fashion or to <laughs> uh, ever because you are doing that of all trade or master or not. Please, at this point, when you when you call my name, what comes to your mind? What comes to mind? This is when I hear Dr. Mary, what comes to mind is capacity building, hey. training, yes, education. Yes. Oh, hello. Wow. From what, I'll just take it from where we stopped last. When you were talking, I like what you said about consistency. Consistency is important when it comes to building anything, whether it's business or like you said, whether you're building a career, it is important to be consistent because over time, people will get to know you for something. I, I really, I really like that. No, mm. I, I can't, I can't hear you. Once I can get the sound back, I will just ask you, we're talking about, can you, you might speak, let me, can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Good. We were on the tips that you will give to your younger self. And I like the fact that you mentioned consistency. Be consistent. Don't just give up. Be consistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the real life example you gave about when you lost your job, I know that phase of your life and how you were able to bounce back by starting one of the strongest travel agencies in Nigeria today. In a way, that was a blessing in disguise because if that didn't happen, you probably would not have started a travel agency. Let me give you, my my listeners, an example of how successful the travel agency is. Last year, I had the opportunity to travel to Israel with my... This was not a coordinated thing. I traveled to Israel. At the same time, Emmanuel had traveled to Israel with a team. And that team, it was a team of over 200 people. Am I correct? Yes, all over. It was a team of 200 people. How did my brother start from selling just one ticket to somebody, two tickets to people, maybe highest, a family? (laughs) Now... Mm-hmm. moving people from all over the world for a tour in another country in his company's name that was amazing for me but it just tells you that this is a living example of what consistency yeah. can do or can be yeah. somebody's life 
like you said earlier, we need more than one of these and this speaking engagement to cover because there's yeah. a lot to cover Emmanuel, your life is yeah. an inspiration your life is a testimony your life is worthy of emulation when i look at you yes i'm your big sister but you inspire me you inspire me yeah. and i just want to talk to my listeners i hope that in this short time, you are able to take something from this, my brother's life. Don't give up. Be consistent. Be ready mm. to learn. Be ready to listen and to be under the tutelage, whether it's your boss, the tutelage of your spiritual leader, the tutelage of mm. your mentors. You should be willing yeah to be taught and to take the lessons that they are willing to share. And mm. I like the fact that you talked about hard work. Remember what mommy mm. always says, hard work has never yeah. killed anybody. Killed anyone. <laughs> hard work has never killed anybody and you are very hardworking. But again, we do not discount and displace the grace of God in our lives. Oh, yes. But yes. God expects you to do the work. He gives you grace, but you're going to do the work because faith without yes. works is what is that? Dead. You got to do the work, right? Before mm. you go, before you go, mm. what is the what is the one big lesson you're going to leave? And they say, what is that one big lesson of your life between when you grew up to this 40th year of your life? What is your one big lesson that you would like to share? before we round up this session oh don't 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 stop believing mm. and uh, mm. whatever you whatever you speak comes to pass words are powerful mm. especially when you are a child of god the words that we speak dr mary i i i see the things that you spoke come to pass wow and 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 that that also just the reason why a lot of us are able to achieve the things we're able to achieve now is because we are able to look at the people in front of us. Yes. And because they've gone through that journey, they were able to make it. Yes. That also gives me that belief that if I go through that same process they too have gone through and I believe and I say the things that they spoke it will surely happen to me. And that has, that, has, that, has, that has helped me even up to this time. Mm. I, don't, I, I don't stop speaking. If mm. I want to achieve something beyond just being hardworking, I speak for those things. Yes. I, I say them. Mm. I believe them. Mm. I, walk, I remember the time you wanted to go do your master's abroad. You kept saying it. It didn't happen immediately. But you kept saying it. And today, a lot of people are celebrating the grace upon your life. Um, you are handling here, you are going here, you're traveling here. But these were years of spoken words. Hallelujah. You know? And, and it, I, I also encourage people, you don't even know the words that you are spoken, which of the year you spoke that is manifesting in your life right now. Right. So just keep speaking. Yes. Maybe it is the one you spoke in 1999. <laughs> By two o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon, that is working for you now. Yes. So just imagine. Yes. Yes. So keep speaking. Keep speaking. Oh um, my goodness. Oh my. They, goodness. they say a closed mouth is a closed destiny. Keep speaking. <laughs> speak. I will encourage everyone. Oh. Just just keep believing. And keep believing. I I love what you said about keep believing and keep speaking. And I also want to thank you. Emmanuel, for believing, because it's mm. easy to go to church and hear the word of God. You hear it as the word of God. You be, it's easier to believe. But when it is somebody else speaking it, sometimes it can look like they're just being braggadocious. They're just talking. Thank you for believing. I remember those mm. times when I will hold, hold hands and I will tell you things like, 
you are going to be on the world stage. You are going to impact mm. many. You are going to be mm. forced to be reckoned with. And I remember then you'll be like, amen, amen, amen. And it, it's so humbling to, to know that you believed them. You believed every word, which was why I was always very careful around you because I know that you will believe anything I tell you. <laughs> Look at you today. You are living in every one of them. When people go like, oh, Ogi Makonga, Ogi Makonga. I am in, in, my, in my quiet time, I'm like, thank God this young man believed. Thank God mm. he believed. And not just believing, mm. he spoke. Because I remember when I would say those things to you, you will actually repeat them after me. Like I will say, you will make progress. You will say, I will make progress. I said, you will be mm. a force to be reckoned with. You will repeat after me. It was almost like mm. if somebody were to see us 20 years ago, mm. that they will be like, man, this poverty thing, eh, it can really disturb people's head. But it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it were, we saw. We saw. We were seeing eyes of the spirit. We were seeing and we were speaking and we were not afraid to speak. That's another part. Yeah. We were not afraid to speak. Our circumstances at the time did not look like it, but we were not afraid to speak. Yes. So even as you're saying it, I am just like, I am in awe, but I want to say thank wow. you. And I want to say thank yeah. God for yes. everything that we are, have experienced, everything that we are experiencing, because we are only just starting. You, yeah. I, can, I can just imagine your next five years your next wow. 10 years how it's going to be yeah. let me use the opportunity to speak now again because i know you <laughs> you will do great things i am yes so, i am so so i am so honored thank you so much like i said i don't want this to stretch because i can talk to you for for forever but we need this to stop now. So I just want to say yes. thank you. Thank you for being you. a blessing to me as your sister. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being yeah. my pastor. Thank you for being my confidant, my vision partner. Thank you for blessing the world with your gifts. Thank mm. you. Thank you so much. The world is better because of mm. the the world is better because of my brother. Thank you so much. Final words so before much. you go. Final words before you go. And I promise you <sighs> not to say anything again after you talk. Final word is that God is not done with you yet. Everything that you are trusting God for, believe and trust that he who is able to keep you from falling hmm. is able to bring to pass all that has been spoken concerning. The Bible says that I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. It may not look like what you are envisioning right now. The process might not be palatable right now, but I want you to just trust God through the process. Mm -hmm. And I know my name, surely as the Lord lives. The only way I know to make it is this presented to you, which is God. Yes. Your hard work, your resilience, and God. The sky will be your starting point. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and this is the point I want to say. Thank you, listeners. Thank you for being with me. This is going to be on YouTube. It will be shared on my YouTube page. Wow. But I will also tag... Wow brother when this comes out this will be on record forever yeah. and as people listen the idea for talking with my brother today is so that people will be blessed as they listen i am excited yeah. i am very grateful for this again thank you so much thank you, thank you for coming on thank, thank you, you so much for honoring thank me you. for I'm grateful being. i'm grateful bless you god bless i'm grateful you. thank you so much I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. I love you. Bye-bye. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.